everyone. Um, I, so I got off my flight last night from New York, and my first impression was, why are Canadians like so nice? And then this morning, um, on my way here, I got into like the elevator in my hotel, and I'm like rubbing my eyes, and then I was reminded that I'm not in New York because someone walked into the elevator, and they said good morning to me. And I was like, I was like, my first thought was like, what does this person want? Like, why are they saying, why are they saying good morning to me? And then I was like, oh yeah, I'm in Canada. Everyone's like so nice. Um, so uh, I was told, I was, I've been told that marketing 101, right, is uh, get to know your audience. So I would love to know who I'm talking to. Can you guys? So I'm Jason. I'd love. Can you just shout out your first names real quick so I know who all of you are? Ready? One, two, three. Okay. I almost, I almost got like two of those. Um, I would also love to know the name of your company or your brand. So there's a lot of people in this room, so your job is to figure out how to make sure that I actually hear you and you stand out from everyone else. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. I think I got like zero of those. So I don't know about you guys, but to me, this is kind of like what marketing is like these days, right? Especially on social media. It's just like there, it's, it, there's so much noise there's so much going on, there's so much information, and it's really, really hard to stand out. Um, and so that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So uh, specifically, I'm here for three reasons. Number one is, I believe that video is the most compelling and effective way to communicate what's important. Number two, I believe that video is the best way for us to get closer to our audience. It's the most authentic way for us to communicate the most real version of our brand, our company, ourselves. And number three is I actually think that uh, a, lot of, a lot of what people talk about about video at other conferences, not this one obviously, is actually not very helpful. And that's what you guys tell me. It's like they're all like, video is like the next, if you're not, on video, you're missing out on the next best thing, and it's, um, I mean, we all believe that, right? But um, it's not actually very useful. What happens is they usually bring someone on stage and they show you like this amazing video. They're like, look at this video I made, it got 19.2 trillion views. Like all you gotta do is do something like this, right? Just like use Rihanna or just, you know, like just find a moment, capture a meme, make it go viral. Or they're like, look at all the stuff that, you know, that gets billions of views, it's like, just do something hilarious like that video. And then, so you're like writing down all these notes and you go back to your unremarkably unhilarious office and you're like sitting, you're like looking around and you're like, okay, uh, viral meme. And you're kind of like looking at your boss and you're like, well, I hope he does something meme worthy, but it doesn't quite look like, you know, Rihanna. Um, now listen, the, uh, if, if you have access to, you know, Beyonce, where every flick of her hair and wink of her eye can break the internet. If you have access to someone like DJ Khaled, where all you have to do is turn on your camera and you get internet gold. If you have access to an amazing creative agency that has a, you know, that has a, a proven history of being hilarious, great. You are super lucky and by all means you should be taking advantage of that. But for the rest of us, which I think is like most of us, right? Like 99% of us, we don't have access to that stuff, but we need to figure out, we need someone to tell us the practical ways of how to actually use video and stand out on social media. So that's what I'm gonna talk to you about. Uh, this is my presentation. Um, by introduction, my name is uh, Jason Chow. I'm the co-founder uh, and chief video officer of Animoto, where we've been literally like living, breathing, sleeping, video, video creation, and everything that has to do with uh, successful video on social media for about the past 10 years. We are partners with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, HubSpot, and others. Um, prior to Animoto, uh, I was actually a TV producer for MTV and Comedy Central. So, I've, so for like 20 plus years, my entire career has been involved in video. Uh, I am also a, uh, a dad, or actually a husband and dad. We live in uh, Brooklyn, these are my two girls. And I brought, with you, I brought with me today some proof that video actually is changing everything. So this is a video clip of my, me and okay. my two girls. Okay, here we go. Circle! So I'm just showing them shapes, you know, just making sure they know the basic Square! shapes. They're twins, by the way. They're, they're six. Over! Okay, and then they get to triangle. And then they, they're like, play! and then they say play. And then they reach out and actually try to press like my laptop screen. And I was like, oh my gosh, you guys. 
video is so disruptive, it's even disrupting shapes. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going to miss triangles. Uh, so basically, triangles are going the way of you know, Tower Records and Blockbuster. They, have these company, they had these companies in Canada, right? So anyway, we're going to miss CDs and DVDs along with the triangle. Um, so anyway, I don't know if that's foolproof proof that you know, video is changing everything. It's probably more indicative that I'm just a crappy parent that gives my kids too much screen time. But the main point here, right, is that we know that the play button is the most compelling action on the web. So what I'm going to talk to you about is uh, three main things. Types of videos, we're just going to get right into it. Uh, we're going to get into some strategy stuff, and we're going to cover some best practices. So, um, you know, I used to have to spend a lot more time on why video. Goldie gave some great stats. There are so, especially like in the last two or three years, there have been so many stats and studies and amazing, you know, tests. These are just some of the, some of the, uh, my favorites are like Facebook generates 8 billion views on average per day, or people recall six times the amount of information from a video than from text. Uh, video generates 12 times more shares on social than text and images combined. But the punchline, right, is video is the most compelling and effective way for us to reach our audience. And it's because video is increasingly the way that people prefer to consume their content. So we have to remember as brands, as individuals, as businesses, that we need to make sure we're communicating in the way that people out there want their information, and that's video. OK, so let's dive right into things. Uh, these are really the 12 types of videos that we see on social, right? So one thing I want to make clear is this is not, these are not like the big budget ad campaigns. That's kind of a whole separate. These are the social media videos, social media marketing videos. These are the 12 types that we typically see, right? That really, no matter what industry you work on, that pretty much pertain to probably most of you or your clients in this room. Um, so whether you're just getting started or you're trying to figure out how to take your video you know, on social to the next level, this is a kind of a great, call it inspiration board of sorts. So the mindset here, right, is some people think like, OK, video is this, uh, I just got to get my video done and I can move on to other stuff. Um, video is not this kind of checklist item on your marketing to-do list. It is a form of communication, right? Uh, so we need to learn to speak video, as I like to say, right? We need to learn to regularly communicate our content, our information, whatever is most important through video. Uh, and my first slide I had, it just, there's, I mean, all of you out here are, are basically content creators in some sort. Everything that you communicate, all the types of content that you create uh, are basically fantastic fodder for video. In fact, one of the things I want to impress upon you, because probably the number one question I get asked uh, when I speak at conferences is, well, like, how do I actually get started? Like, what's the first thing I should do? And a tip I love to give you guys is start with what already works. Think about in your, in your arsenal of marketing or in your content that you've done, what is the thing that has worked actually the best or the most? Um, let me give you one example. Everyone heard of uh, this company, Buffer? They make great like, social media tools. So one of the things that they're super known for uh, in addition to their great social media tools, is they have amazing content, amazing blog posts. They do all sorts of studies and interesting content. So they're super known for the great blog content. They were trying to figure out how to get into video. So what they did is they took all their blog posts. They literally just sorted them by which ones are most popular uh, to least popular. They took you know the handful of most popular ones, and they started converting those to videos. And they were either uh, trying to just basically summarize everything in that a video, or in that blog post, in that video, maybe if, if it was like top five reasons to XYZ, or if it was something longer, they created like a teaser video to that content. And you can see in these little examples that they didn't even really have to go out and shoot anything. A lot of these are text, maybe combined with some stock video or some stock images or some images that they already had uh, in their blog post or on their site, right? So a lot of people are like, I don't want to do video, or my client or me, and we're not comfortable in front of camera. You don't need uh, to go out and hire an expensive production firm, firm to get started, a production company to get started. Uh, you can take what you already have, think about what works for you, what already works in terms of message, in terms of content, in terms of images on your, on your site or on your social pages, and get started uh, with what already works. All right, I'm going to talk a bit about social platforms. I'm mostly focused here on Facebook and Instagram, but I just want to talk a little bit about, because uh, People, I, uh, one of the things that we see is that um, people are kind of just treating all of these platforms like the same. And I want to spend a little bit of time talking about how they're different. So first off, uh, I just want to talk about Facebook. So Facebook, by the numbers, 
is still the biggest. Um, so this is really where everyone uh, is. But what's interesting, right, is probably Instagram is the, is the fastest growing right now. So it's not the biggest, but it's probably the one, but it is the platform with the most engagement, and it is where I think there's a lot of momentum going right now. And in fact, we do this annual study, and you can kind of even see by some of these numbers, this is platforms where video drive purchases, that and uh, the left hand, the teal side is 2017, the white is 2018. So, you know, Facebook is still pretty dominant, and YouTube is up there in terms of volume, but Instagram is really kind of growing the fastest in terms of uh, influence of video. So I have a feeling this time next year we're going to be talking even more about Instagram. Um, so here's what I was kind of saying. A lot of people treat the platforms all the same. They'll take maybe like the same piece of content or the same video, and they'll just plaster it across all the social media platforms. Um, as it turns out, well, you can do this, uh, but it's actually not as effective. What's really important is for us to really understand how these platforms are different and how people behave on these platforms differently and to make sure we really cater our video content on these platforms for how they're really used. So this is my cheat sheet for you guys. You can take a picture of it if you want. I'm not gonna go through all of this in detail, but let me just take kind of a, the, let me take Facebook, for example. So Facebook, Facebook is, great for updates, what's new? Actually, I'll go through um, these really quick. Instagram is fantastic for inspiration, what's interesting, that's why visual content works so well on, on Instagram. Twitter um, is really about what's happening, what's current, what's right now, it's because, because it's so ephemeral, uh, it's about what's happening right now. And YouTube, in many ways, people don't even think of YouTube these days as like a social media platform where you're going to connect with your colleagues and your friends. Um, it's almost like a search repository for video, and people are often sitting down and going there to learn something about, uh, you know, how to do something or, or learn about some, a topic that they don't know about. And when we think about how people use these platforms differently, they use them in very specific ways. So let's just take Facebook as an example. Typically on Facebook, people are on the go, they're on mobile, which contributes probably to their short attention span, so they don't have time. They're typically watching stuff or flipping through the feed without audio, right? So we have to remember when they're watching video uh, that they're not listening with sound, so we have to make sure that it still works without sound. Um, and they're just like flipping through their feed, right? Like think about how fast you flip through your feed. I think like a couple years ago, people used to say, make sure your first three seconds really count. Well, if you think about the first three seconds on social media, that is actually kind of like an eternity. It's really like the first second or the first half second, right? And you take YouTube maybe as an, um, an opposite example where usually when people are on YouTube, they are a bit more engaged. They're like sitting down, they're leaning forward, they're, they're engaged, they're searching on something, they're ready to watch, they will take the time to watch longer videos because they're kind of already opted in. Um, they're usually watching with audio and they're searching for specific information, right? So make sure that whatever your video is about is something that people might actually search for. All right, so the great thing is Goldie just covered everything about LinkedIn, so I probably don't have to talk too much about LinkedIn. Um, we are very close with LinkedIn. The main thing that you guys need to know, as you probably kind of uh, gathered from this last presentation, they are investing heavily in video, and uh, we've been running a whole bunch of tests, and in terms of cost uh, efficacy, LinkedIn is probably um, getting to be about as cost effective as Facebook and Instagram. The main thing I want you guys to, I, the main thing I want to underscore, because they mentioned it, Goldie mentioned it, is you, especially for agency folks here, you guys may be focused on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter for your clients, but LinkedIn is where you're getting your, uh, is where you're growing your business, right? So you should be marketing yourselves on LinkedIn because in terms of B2B, anything B2B, LinkedIn is really the first place that you need to be, right? So even if you're an agency, don't forget about LinkedIn because that's where you need to be growing your business. Um, I get a lot of questions about Facebook Live, how to do Facebook Live, whether it's still relevant. So the main thing I want to cover here is uh, that there are time and places for anything live, particularly Facebook Live. So uh, I see all sorts of people just kind of doing anything and everything on live because they think it's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to get boosted more or that Facebook is going to favor it. So you need to be able to think about, you need to be able to actually answer why is this live? Um, and it usually has something to do with the immediacy, um, how relevant that content is. Um, maybe it's a, a type of topic where you're looking for engagement um, or questions or interactions with your audience. Um, and you might also think about, is it repurposable? So, let's see here. Uh, this is a good example. So Billboard, 
um, was experimenting with a bunch of live stuff over the past year. So they covered uh, one of the women's marches. So this was a great example of the time. It was not only timely um, and a great way for them to get a lot of interaction, but they were also able to repurpose a lot of that live kind of content and turn it into more kind of evergreen content, or at least content that was relevant over the next uh, you know, several months and quarters. All right, I'm going to move on to some thoughts on strategy. So we talked about uh, several different types of videos that you can be thinking about to kind of speak video. One of the main, oops, one of my things got covered there. Uh, one of the main things I, I, I want to try to impress upon you guys is that the old, I'll say old, or maybe the current or the traditional way of thinking about marketing is uh, people, you know, either playing the numbers game, like maybe for every 10,000 emails I send out, X percent will click on them and open them or click through, or you know, every 1,000 phone calls I make, maybe you know, so and so. Um, or they're just like, we call, it, we call it posting and praying. They're just like putting stuff out there and hoping people like discover it. What's happening today, and this is all driven by social media, is that you don't have to wait for people to discover you or to find your website. You have the ability now, especially with all the targeting uh, the targeting tools that all these social platforms provide, you have the opportunity to take your message, to take your content, to take your information directly to where the conversation is already happening, and that's on social media. Um, all right. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, possibilities now with testing video. Um, and I just want to quickly say that uh, just one of the mistakes I see is people are trying to test uh, everything. Um, if I was just to offer a quick framework, I'll just build this out really quick. There's kind of two main axes of this video, right? There's how important is this video uh, and how kind of evergreen is this video, right? So the punchline here is these videos are definitely worth testing and perfecting, the ones that are actually important and are going to be around for a while, maybe like something, for example, that might actually live on your website or your homepage. But these other videos, you don't need to perfect these videos. You just have to do these videos, and you will learn by doing and putting them out there and just trying lots of videos over time. So don't get too hung up on that video that's only going to be relevant for like a week. Try it, take the learnings, and then move on. All right, so this is the fun part that I want to get to, best practices. Uh, how do I stand out on social media? So the one thing that I really want to impress upon you, because I see this happen all the time, because we're all sitting in front of like our, you know, our big screens at our desks, and is most people are consuming everything on social media, including video, on mobile, right? Which means they are on the go, they have short attention spans. But one of the things we need to remember is to use text, and use text in big, bold ways, and not assume that they're listening. Uh, to the audio. So, uh, and if you have someone talking in your video, make sure that you're using captions so they actually know what's going on. So, create for mobile. That doesn't mean that you can, you know, just ignore the, the sound on experience, but make sure you know that most of your audience is actually watching without sound. The other thing I want to impress upon you is uh, that square videos right now, I think, are probably the most cost-effective form to be using, the most uh, effective form to be using. And the basic reason why is square videos take up 78% more space in your feed than landscape videos. And just by the fact that they take up that much more visual real estate means they perform that much better. Um, and of course, now we're seeing a lot of activity with vertical videos. I wouldn't quite say it's um, all completely proven out yet. There's a lot of kind of mixed studies about uh, how effective uh, vertical videos are. Certainly for like Instagram stories, that's like all you can do. But I would say the safest bet for most social platforms out there is square video um, in terms of cost, uh, cost efficacy. And in fact, uh, there's a bunch of studies. So Buffer actually did a bunch of studies recently about square versus landscape. I won't go into all the details, but basically they were seeing landscape in a meaningful way outperform uh, landscape videos on social media. Um, Jane Goodall Institute, so fantastic brand, fantastic uh, institution. They not only do great stuff with um, animals and um, all sorts of social good causes, they're actually very savvy with social media, and they did a whole bunch of tests recently with landscape and square videos, and they had fantastic success, that, like twice as many likes, three times as many shares with square videos. Um, okay. Even movie companies, sorry, movie com movie trailers are are coming out in square format. And you would think that if anyone was loyal to the widescreen format, it would be you know Avengers movie Infinity movie houses, right? But you're seeing more and more movie trailers in square Avengers. because they know that square is more performing.
Um, all right, the other thing, so we talked a little bit about this. Uh, one of the things that <laughs> annoys me a little bit when people talk about video at some of these conferences is they're like, okay, think like a storyteller and th just think, pretend you're Steven Spielberg, like you're, like you're a filmmaker. What would you do if you were a filmmaker? Creating video for social media is nothing like creating a film. And here's the main reason why is because unlike a theater uh, or a going to a movie where you know your audience is going to be in their seats at the end of your two hour movie, that never happens on social media, right? You'll be lucky if half your initial viewers actually made it through, I don't know, half your video, right? So by definition, you start with 100% of people and it just goes down from there, right? So start with what's important or start with what's most compelling. Uh, find that most interesting clip or image or question and you have to hook them in that first half a second, right? Here's a, a fun example of uh, this clip I saw on Instagram to kind of show like start with, uh, start with the best. I was like, okay, I gotta keep watching this video now. So my, my, my dream is for my daughters to be like that so they can protect me in the streets of New York. Um, but you see what they did there, right? So they had a, a really fun video clip, but if they just kind of posted that probably the way that most people would, probably most people would never actually get to that good part because it's a few, you know, it's several seconds in. So they took probably one of the coolest parts, put it up front, and then played the video clip. And you think about all your various worlds, a lot of people find interesting ways to do this, like anything that's like before and after, or if there's like a renovation or a makeover, they'll sometimes show like, you know, the before and after up front, and then they'll show the journey of how they got to that point. So think about in your world, how can you save the best for first, hook them, and then get into your video. And remember that every second counts, um, especially for people who are making videos for the first time. I often say like, if you've made, I don't know, a one minute video, I bet you can take that same amount of information and communicate it in half the amount of time, right? So remember, every second counts, every second people are dropping off, so you have to make every second count. All right, so here's the other thing uh, I wanna talk to you about. Uh, don't try to be funny, especially if that's not part of your brand, right? Authenticity is more important th than hilarity. Um, and the reason why is authenticity equals trust, right? In today's age of information overload, misinformation overload, nothing is more important today in standing out and getting closer to your audience than making sure that they trust you as a brand, as an individual, as a company. Um, the other thing too is, uh, you know, being funny is actually really hard and uh, in many ways, I mean, I don't know if you guys can think of like when, when people try to be funny and they're not, it's like really, really painful and I think it can actually be harmful to your brand. You think about, uh, I don't know, like Saturday Night Live, these are like career funny people that their entire career and jobs is all about being funny. How many of those sketches on Saturday Night Live are actually funny? Like maybe the first couple, but like 80% of them are really not funny. Or when people pour millions of dollars into the Super Bowl and you watch those commercials that are trying to be really funny and most of them actually aren't funny, but some of them are, but the ones that aren't, you're like, oh, that's too bad that those people spent so many millions of dollars and time and energy on those. So again, if you have access to you know, proven funny people with a track record of this stuff, that's great. But if your brand is not funny, don't try to be funny just because you're seeing other funny stuff out there. It's really hard and it can actually be really painful uh, and detrimental to your brand. Nature. It's more important that you focus on the, on the content, on the information that you know your audience uh, actually res resonates with. Um, what was that example that Goldie gave where she was like a video of, was it something to do with like cement or something? I forgot what she said. But it's like that matters to that audience because that's what they actually care about. They don't want to see that cement company like trying to do something funny or whatever. They care about learning about what it is that that company has to offer or what service or um, something specific to that topic. So, all right. Uh, if I had more time, something fun I, I like to do is I like to like show each one of these one at a time and just say, what's your impression of what this brand is like, right? And so here, these are just like some of the videos I got over the last you know, few weeks that I just kind of took quick snapshots of. 
And it's really interesting just to see, even in this kind of quick snapshot, like the variety of different kind of brand characteristics that come through. Uh, the main thing I want to impress upon you, right, is that everything that you include in your video is an opportunity for you to reinforce your brand. Or if you're doing work for your clients to reinforce your client's brand, right? So the people that you include, the location of where you're, where you're shooting, like, I don't know, if you shoot in your office behind your desk, what does that say about you and your brand? I personally think that's a little boring. Um, the imagery, whatever imagery you use, right? If you're including either stuff off your, you know, photos or video clips off your site, or if you're getting stuff off, you know, off, uh, you know, a stock site or off Getty or whatever, make sure you're thinking about whether that reflects your brand. Um, the text and copy, the font, the colors, the camera, even the camera, the ca type of camera work that you're using, the music, the logos, right? All of this is an opportunity to reinforce your brand. Uh, and here's the other thing is, and you guys probably know this better than anyone else, is I see so many people out there just kind of jumping on the social bandwagon and trying to do like everything for every social media, like the National Candy Cane Day or National whatever day. Like, yeah, guys, if it's not part of your brand, you don't have to, you know, jump on, you know, all these different national whatever, whatever day. Think, of, be very thoughtful about what actually is a reflection of your brand. And if you think about what's happening on social media, this is one of my favorite stories is uh, more and more social media is becoming the face of companies uh, and brands, even more, I would say even more so than a company's website or their homepage, right? So it's not just about your posts, it's about the whole collection of what you are posting. I hear all the time from folks, uh, from friends and from folks in our office, how when they hear about a brand for the first thing, the first thing they do isn't go search and find their website, they go to like Instagram, right? These are all the 20, 30 somethings now that that's the first place they go and they're flipping through, uh, you know, the, 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 um, the portfolio of posts, the pictures of posts, and that's how they're judging like what that company is all about or what that brand is all about. Um, the other thing I want to impress upon you guys is social media is not just for uh, social media is not just for driving awareness, right? Increasingly, it can really serve the entire customer journey, uh, the, the entire customer journey kind of a, a um, train. So, last week, has anyone heard of this company called Bombas? They like make socks. Um, last week I went to the Bombas website and I bought myself like 12 pairs of socks and it occurred to me that I had never actually even been to that website before but I was already ready to purchase and I was like, wow, how did that happen? And I realized that everything I learned about Bombas happened on social media. I learned that they have this amazing like buy one, give one um, program, so very great for social good, that they're like total sock tech nerds and they like incorporate all these different fabrics and technologies into their socks and they have this 100% guarantee. I learned all this great stuff about Bombas. By the time I, on social media, by the time I got to the site, I was already ready to purchase. So social media is not just for driving awareness, it really can accomplish that entire customer journey. Right? All right, so that's a bit about video strategy practice. I had to talk really fast to cover everything I wanted to. Uh, if you're not familiar with Animoto, um, Animoto, it's kind of like people say, it's kind of like the Canva video. Basically, it's a super simple drag and drop tool where it's like based on building blocks and you can just drag and drop your own content um, and drag stuff around. It's like impossible to make a failed video. Everything that we talked about, by the way, in this presentation, you can actually do in Animoto. And the other cool thing is, in case you're trying to figure out how to even get started, we have this whole collection of starter templates that we call storyboards that we've poured all our wisdom and knowledge over the years about what makes for a successful video into these storyboards. You can just open one of these up and drag and drop your own content in. Um, so that's a little bit about Animoto. So the last thing I just want to say is rest in peace, Triangles. We're really going to miss you. Uh, please be in touch, whether you're just getting started with video or trying to figure out how to take things to the next level. Don't be shy about getting in touch. I'd love to chat with you. Thanks, everyone.